Well, I'm the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson. Thank you, thank you. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to hook the bowling ball the proper way. Today we're going to talk about how to hook the bowling ball the proper way. All right, folks, so hooking the ball properly is all about getting the wrist and the hand in the right position. Notice how David's fingers are the, to the inside part of the ball. If he's releasing the ball in that position where most people think you have to get to curve it or hook it, doesn't work. This position, a little cup wrist, uncup the wrist, and just minimal rotation. All right, so we showed you the traditional way with thumb in. How about the two-handed way? Well, it doesn't change. Look, just look at where Tyler's hand is right here. Look at how he's supporting the ball. Wrist is cupped. He's in a perfect position right there. All right, folks, so there you have it. Take a page out of David and Tyler's book. Get your hand in the proper position. Remember, too much rotation is no good. It doesn't make the ball hook more. So get your hand in that right position, get a little wrist cup, learn how to release it like the pros, and I promise you, you'll throw more strikes. We're gonna talk about targeting, but not just at the arrows. How many of you ever thought about extending your target line down to the break point? So you're probably asking yourself, hey Randy, what the heck's a break point? Well, the break point is the end of the oil pattern where the ball comes off of the end of the pattern, sees friction, and starts to make motion towards the pocket. And determining that break point, uh, there's kind of a simple little math uh, that you can use. Remember the number 31. If you know how long the oil pattern is, subtract it by 31, and that'll give you a rough idea of where that break point should be. So I have Tyler today that's gonna show you two different bowling balls, two different angles, but the same break point. So this is a 41 foot pattern. His break point is gonna be about the 10th board. Let's have a look. So here's Tyler's first shot. He's gonna play deep inside line in between third and fourth arrow at the arrows, down to that break point at about the 10th board. You can see that ball really starting to turn the corner, but you can see how much angle he's playing and he has to because he's using a fairly strong bowling ball that has surface on it. All right, different bowling ball. Now we're going to urethane. Uh, cover stock that's not very strong, so this bowling ball is gonna go pretty straight. So you can see Tyler's moved his feet to the right right here, right around the, the second arrow at the arrows. Look how straight he's going, but still that same break point down lane. All right, folks, so there you have it. You know, instead of just looking at the arrows, draw that line down to your break point. It'll give you an extra reference point. Every professional on tour does it. Even though they spot at a target closer, they still have that visual reference that gives them an idea on the shape and the direction they want to throw the ball in. Try this, you're going to become an elite bowler. All right, folks, so I think there's a couple of things that are vital to help increase the odds of you making the corner pins. We're talking the seven pin and the 10 pin. First thing you wanna do is make sure that you give yourselves plenty of angle, meaning if you leave a 10 pin, you wanna stand as far to the left on the approach as you can, and then vice versa for the seven pin. Giving yourself angle will increase your margin for error in trying to convert these corner pins. Second, let's have a little confidence. You know how many times I've heard somebody say, oh no, it's the 10 pin, or oh no, it's the seven pin, and I never make them. Well, we gotta change that, that thought process right now. And we're going to give you some tips today on how to gain more confidence in shooting these corner pins. Folks, a couple of other things you might want to think about is maybe getting a spare ball, whether it's a plastic or a urethane bowling ball. And then finally, the last piece of the puzzle, learn how to flatten your wrist out and then get that bowling ball to roll end over end. This is important because no matter what oil pattern you're bowling on, the bowling ball is not going to read that pattern. And we don't want the ball curving at the seven or the 10 pin. So notice right off the bat, all three players standing near the extreme left side of the lane. And what this does is it opens up the lane, gives them plenty of angle to get the ball to go across lane and into the 10 pin. The other thing that's very obvious is the direction of the roll on the bowling ball. Notice how it's tumbling end over end. 
This minimizes any change of direction as the ball travels down the lane. And take a look at how flat their wrists are. This helps reduce rev rate and keeps the ball under control and on a straight line. All right, members, there you have it. Don't be afraid of those corner pins. They're nothing. Trust me, with some repetition and practice, you'll have nothing but confidence. And take it from the three guys, Ben, Tyler, and David, who helped me out with this. Take a page out of their books, and you'll be fine shooting corner pins. So typically, folks, how many times have you seen your friend bowling league? They stand so far to the left if you're a right-hander and opposite if you're a left-hander and they try to hook the whole lane, and not only are they having trouble getting to the pocket, but when their ball does get to the pocket, it hits like a wet piece of spaghetti. They can't strike, even though they're getting there, and it, we see it so often. So today, our three players, Ben, Tyler, and David, all started to the extreme far left side of the lane and tried to play that big hook. Not only did they have trouble getting to the pocket, but when they did, they didn't strike very much. Let's take a look. So here you can see the players standing pretty far to the left side of the lane. They're trying to open up the lane. Man, they're having trouble getting their ball to pick up and read, and it's so typical. And again, struggling just to get to the pocket. Carry percentage not very good when they get there. And so something has to change, right? So you know what our guys did? They changed to a ball that went straighter. They moved 15 to 20 boards right in the approach, tightened up their angles. Well, look what happened after they did that. Now all of a sudden they're having no trouble getting to the pocket. When they do get to the pocket, they're destroying the pins and look how much more fun they're having. I know I was having more fun. So there you have it folks. Listen, if you're having trouble striking, it's because the ball's not going through the pins correctly and something has to change. Whether it's a big move on the approach with feet and then changing your target down lane, changing to a different bowling ball, but you have to get out of that shape that you're in, create a different shape, you'll get to the pocket more often, and you'll start striking more. Your carry percentage will go way up, and so will your scores. See you next time.